Hey, how's it going? My name's Steve Walter. Today, I want to talk to you about this. It's time for a Tuesday Tips. Okay, so uh, I'm recording in uh, 4K 10 bit, and my recorder tells me I've got less than 20 minutes to do this, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this in less than 20 minutes. This video is gonna be sort of a two part thing. One, it's gonna be a Tuesday tip because I wanna tell you about this thing and why this can be really handy and what it is. But then I also wanna use that as a way to describe why I use this or when I use this in a photo that I took and then kind of break down that photo. So this video is mainly for my channel, but also I wanted to direct it towards the people over at the Steel and Flint group. Uh, it's a Facebook group run by Esteban and uh, Nicole. Uh, I'm going to put a link down below so you guys can check that out. It's an educational group for wedding photography, so definitely check that out if you are interested in wedding photography. Now, the image that I'm talking about here is not a wedding image per se, but what happens is once a week, uh, Esteban and the group, what they'll do is they'll run a sort of challenge. I was going to call it a contest. It's not really a contest. There are no winners, right? But it's a challenge to say, hey, try to find an image or try to capture an image based on XYZ criteria. So in this case, the image that I'm sharing was an image based off of the challenge for negative space. Before I dive into that, let me talk about this guy again. So what this is, hold on one second. This is a device that will allow you to hold three flashes. Um, if you don't own one of these, buy one. Because chances are, if you're a wedding photographer or if you're a photographer in general, you have more than one speed light, right? Well, you might. Especially now because speed lights are so affordable. You can get a really good speed light for like 230 bucks and then less. This device holds all three of them and you can see it also has a little hole here for I think it's a seven or eight millimeter umbrella shaft. This is what I used on the shoot that I'm gonna show you the image from. And what's cool about this is that this actually just saved my ass the other day, not the other day, a few months ago when I shot a wedding, and normally this is what I use. One of these guys for doing my formal portraits. Now, this is overkill typically for most of the portraits that I'm doing. When I get into larger groups, it's really helpful to have that extra power, but this, for whatever reason, wasn't working. I'm not sure exactly what the problem was, but it wasn't working. So what did I do? I had a backup of my backup which was that tri-flash holder. So I was able to put three of my speed lights in there, pop it in a soft box, and it worked great. And it covered all of the group shots that I needed to do because all three of those flashes I could run at a slightly lower power so that way they could recycle faster. And it still produced enough power for me to cover the group of six, seven, eight people that I needed to cover. So Tuesday tip, sorry, a Tuesday tip. Make sure you get one of those tri-flash holders just so that way you have it. I think they're maybe 25 bucks, 30 bucks. Um, it's just a good thing to have in your kit, just in case. And not to mention the fact that if you already own three flashes, that means you don't have to buy a more powerful flash because you can utilize the three flashes that you already have for the times when you need more power. So it's just a, a more versatile tool if you already have existing equipment. But if you need something that's more powerful, then buy that. Okay, so let's dive into this image. And really what I wanted to kind of do was walk through a bit of a breakdown of how I edited this image um, as per request by Esteban. So Esteban, this is for you, bud. All right, here we are in Lightroom and you can see I've got this pulled up and we're looking at these images. So again, this was negative space. So let me talk a little bit about negative space. I intentionally framed this image with negative space and I don't even think I cropped it. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm in the develop module here. I'm gonna hit the R key to pull up the crop tool. I cropped it a little bit. Um, but I basically framed this shot so that there was a juxtaposition and that there was a, a tension from the direction in which she's looking at versus the, the sort of, the sort of uh, ominous cloud space that's above her. So there's definitely a mood to this, right? Something that is a little bit darker. And so I really wanted to play off of that with my post-processing. Um, and you could see that I lit her from camera left. And let me just show you very quickly the... Uh, the modifier, I had it in one of the behind the scenes. Here you go. It's basically a, a shoot through umbrella, but it had a, a back cover so that, that way I was really maximizing all of the light um, that, that I was uh, firing in there. So nothing was getting you know lost. It was kind of bouncing around there and pushing it all forward. So that was the modifier that I was using. So really simple, basic modifier. Again, you can get a shoot through umbrella for like 25 bucks, a decent one. Um, so that's what I was using here to, to light her on the left side and I wanted it in pretty close because I wanted it to be nice and soft and then again I wanted to play up to the drama. In the develop module here, let me go ahead over to the raw file that you can see. Um, 
here are some of the settings that I did. Uh, not that these matter all that much, right? Because every image is gonna be a little bit different, but this is what it looked like out of the camera. So that's really what I wanted to show you was, this was the before, and that's the after. So I definitely am leaning a little bit more onto the green side, right? Green in the shadows, I think I might have done that. Yeah, a little bit negative here, five uh, in my calibration for the greens. If I go into the tone curve, you can see here what I've done with that, my HSL. Those are my luminance adjustments. Here's my saturation adjustments and my hue adjustments. I really just adjusted that red there. And you can see in her fingertips how they're still pretty red. I'll show you what I did in Photoshop to fix that. Split toning, let's see. Yep, I went a little bit here into the kind of teals uh, and then a little bit of warmth into the, the highlights there, which is a common processing, right? You would want to go a little bit cooler in the shadows and a little bit warmer in your highlights. Uh, sharpening, sure, we'll add some sharpening and some lens correction. Transform, nothing there. Effects, I typically don't do anything there. So that was what I did from the raw file. So again, before and after. Also what I did, uh, radial gradients. So I, I love playing with radial gradients to really draw attention to where I want it to be. So you can see whatever's red is currently uh, where the mask is being applied. And you can change that, by the way. If you do Shift O, you can cycle through the colors of the mask. Some of your images, like if you had a red background, you wouldn't see it, so maybe you want to use green. But anyway, I typically leave it on red. That's just a, a secondary tip where you can uh, change the, uh, the mask that you're using. You can see here, I just kind of lowered the exposure a little bit, uh, pulled out some clarity, pulled out some saturation. And then I also added a radial gradient here to her face just to call uh, I, I reduced the contrast so that it wasn't as heavy in the shadows. That's typically when I would do that. And it kind of softens the skin, softens the skin a little bit, but really I did all of that in Photoshop. So here's a before and after of just radio gradient. So you can see that's really what adds the mood to this image is um, darkening those, those clouds in that sky to really draw your eye down towards her face. Cool, so that was the processing that I did in Lightroom. I then took this image and exported it to Photoshop as a uh, smart object. And you can see if we go over here, here's what that image looks like in Photoshop. Here is the smart object down here, the raw file, right? Uh, and then I have a series of adjustments that I go through. The first thing that I do is I clean up the file. Let me zoom in here a little bit. I just call it my clean layer. And this is where I retouch out any kind of uh, little bits. So you can see like uh, whether I gotta fix a little blemish, so some pores, things like that. That's where I will do things on my clean layer. Then I do this thing that I call a bit of a, a faux frequency separation, where I recreate the texture on its own layer and then I add in the color that I want to. I'm actually gonna be posting another image from my buddy Brian. So Brian, if you're watching this, that video's coming, man, I swear. Um, so you can see here where I just basically smooth out the skin with the color. Um, and then here you can see uh, red hand where I went in and did a, a corrective adjustment here for her fingertips and her hand. Slight pet peeve of mine. Um, when I see people retouch a whole face and then hands are just left alone, um, or arms uh, or torso, whatever it is, they just retouch the face. Make sure you're retouching your hands and your torso, all that stuff, so it kind of matches. Because without it, you can see her fingertips look very red. Um, chances are it was probably a little windy, a little cold. Uh, sorry, Amber, that's Amber, by the way. Um, blue hair, you can see if I go up here a little bit, I wanted to kind of emphasize those roots a little bit. So you can see I colored everything in just a smidge. And that was just by painting on a color layer. And this is at 100%. And then the last thing that I did here was a liquify layer for hair tuck. So you can see I kind of just tucked in those, those frizzies just a little bit. Um, so that was really all I did in Photoshop. So this is the before and after in Photoshop. So you can see kind of smoothing out some of the skin and uh, just some slight uh, color adjustment. So I'm gonna close this. So here you can see those two images side by side. And we'll zoom in a little bit here. We'll zoom in a little bit here. I should have had my zoom lock on. Here we go, there's my zoom lock. That's better. So you can see a, a before and after, uh, or after and before. But really it was, uh, all about playing with that negative space, all about playing with that tension because she's looking towards the bottom of the frame and your eye can't help but say, ah, I can't look down there, Th this is bothering me. So your eye naturally is gonna go up to the, the big wide open space and there's nothing there. It's just, it's just empty and it's dark. So I think that's what helps make this an interesting image and I think that's what helps complement the image versus fighting the image. I wouldn't wanna make it bright and airy because 
she's not in a bright and airy pose. She's definitely, you know, a, a little bit more moody, for lack of a better word. I think I've said that a few times. Again, just a quick recap. Uh, buy one of those tri-flash holders because if you already have the speed lights, use them. Uh, put them together, get more power out of them. Put them all in the same group, same channel, and you can fire them all at once, and it's, it's great. Uh, or if you need to, buy something that's bigger and can give you more power and, and use that. But it was really nice to have something super lightweight. Uh, my friend Bill Fritz was helping me out on the shoot. He was actually holding the light. We were trading back and forth. Uh, this was just a, a fun shoot that we did with Amber. So it was great to have someone be able to hold that and not get weighed down as well. If you haven't already, check out the, the Facebook group for Steel and Flint Society. Uh, link again down below. And if you guys have thoughts, questions, feedback, comments, please send them my way. I love all that stuff. And if you want to see some of the other things I'm doing, I got a podcast. Um, there's links down below for that. My Instagram, all that stuff. So thank you guys for hanging out and I'll see you next week.